Well, hello everybody. It's Jess here, and I thought, you know what? I'm on a road trip. I got a couple hours. I need to make this video before I forget. So I, I don't know about you, but I've been having weird sleep uh, for the last couple of months, and you know, just the energy increasing and the solstice, and you know, collapse of 3D, and you know, moving into the fifth dimensional reality. You know, no big deal. But it has a has an effect on our sleep, our moods, our bodies, everything. But what I want to talk about is being tested, because what I am seeing across the board, uh, all my clients through I don't know 103 different countries, including myself, is it seems to be a theme of where we're being tested right now, and. I thought, you know what, why don't we just be a little proactive? If we know this is kind of what's coming up, then maybe we can, you know, create a strategy, be more aware of what the universe or higher self or, you know, spirit is asking of us to get into alignment with, you know, having a, a, a more joyful, free, loving environment, experience, okay, um, self-image, all these things are, are super important. and. You're probably hitting up against two major challenges and you know, we call it the echo effect and you know every time you're kind of leveling up into that new reality you get tested and it's always four echoes and my students know them all too well and it's like every time you know you're completing a video game you know you got to face the biggest bosses or the dragons the bigger ones at the very end so if you feel like you're kind of being tested or being faced with this bigger than normal challenge right now, um, know that you're just leveling up and that you are literally being asked to, um, to grow, right? And to prove the state of being that you say you desire. So here are the four echoes and then I'll give you the two big lessons that you're going to repeat until you um, get a, at, least a, at least a C plus, right? D minus in this. So what it's gonna look like is the four echoes. When you level up or when you begin to shift into a higher dimensional awareness of yourself, like you grow, you expand, you become, you put yourself out there, you're, you know, you're having that shift. The four echoes are something breaks, you get sick, okay, you get attacked or judged like out of nowhere, um, and or you know, something goes missing that you really need, like you, you lose something and or you just lose someone right so those are the four echoes and they can be very extreme cases or they can be like losing your car keys i've seen it both ways depends on what it is going to require for you to get very present and very particular and very you know deliberate and very discerning about who you say you are and what you say you really want okay so those are the four echoes happens every time you grow my students, we're all used to it. We're like, echo, right? Some of them, sometimes you have one, sometimes you have all four, depends. It really just depends. Now, the two big lessons that you're gonna be experiencing up until March of 2022, okay? All right, the two of them are boundaries. Number one, boundaries, okay? Where are you needing to practice boundaries? And this is all areas, right? You cannot truly take ownership of your own consciousness and your own awareness if you lack boundaries because like I've said in earlier videos we are literally our own universe and and a universe has an orbit okay we have a flow about us very distinct flow and when we're constantly bleeding into other people or allowing other people to constantly bleed into ours depending on the gravitational pull of someone else's frequency or universe you might get pulled in to their orbit, all right? And a lot of times, maybe they'll get sucked into yours, but if you're noticing that you're struggling with boundaries, nine times out of 10, you're getting sucked somewhere into a conversation, into guilt and shame, into obligation, into rescuing, right? You've got to look right now where you need to check yourself, avoid wreck yourself, right? Where do you need stronger boundaries, AKA tough love, right? Look for boundaries that you need to create or um, practice more in the areas of time. Where do you need to create boundaries with your time? 
How are you really going to create this amazing life if your time is, is not yours ever? Okay? You've got to find the time. So boundaries of time. Ask yourself, does spending this time, does spending this money really is an investment into who I'm becoming, where I'm going? And it's not heartless, guys, and it's not selfish. It is about growth. You can help people more when you are that, that your definition of success. You can help people more. Okay? Remember that. Take that opportunity to practice boundaries of time. Relationships. Biggest holy grail and biggest nemesis. Right? This is your kryptonite. Okay, where do I need to practice better boundaries in my relationships? Which ones are toxic? Which ones need less? Which ones are one-sided? I mean, how you know that is who's going to be there for you if you're going through the exact same thing they're needing you every day for? Practice your boundaries in relationships, all right? Practice your boundaries with money. This is a, a little different. You want to say to yourself, money, okay? How I practice m boundaries with money and getting better at this all the time is... I invest money, right, into my growth. Not my instant gratification anymore, my growth, right? So I always ask myself, is spending this gonna make me better, right? Or, or is it gonna make me bitter, okay? Is this money that I'm spending because I don't love myself or to invest in loving myself? These are how you look for boundaries with money, right? Do I believe that I can't save, so I'm going to spend it now on a less settled version, right? Think about that, all right? So next it, next relationships, we've got money boundaries. We've got boundaries with our time, last but not least, health. How do you create boundaries of health? Well, first of all, being around toxic people is worse than eating toxic food, bottom line, energetically, because you're interacting constantly. At least food can go in and out. People, they linger. Right? Their words hurt and they stick with us. The ghost of their imprint is forever. All right? So watch your boundaries with relationships. That'll help your health. Watch your boundaries with money. That will help your health because you won't be a nervous Nelly. Your nervous, your nervous system won't be fight or flight all the time. Okay? Watch your boundaries with that. Watch your boundaries with time. Are you taking the time to invest in your own vitality and cooking good food for yourself? Or are you rushing around and stressed out and not really present when you're eating? Okay, boundaries of that for your health. And boundaries, if you know something is not good for you, whether it's a comfort food or a guilty pleasure, ask yourself, what is the price I'm gonna pay with my time tomorrow? And how's my mood gonna be tomorrow? And this might be a good thing where, I'm gonna tell you right now, all of us should have a boundary with white sugar and white flour. It's not good for the human body. It's the food of a parasite, and it is the food of ego. So. It's a craving. It's a, it's a strong craving as heroin. Uh, people don't think it's as bad, but it's just as addictive. And what it does is it strips your body of healthy minerals so that you can think clearly. And so when you have too much sugar, you're craving sugar, sugar, sugar. You're giving ammunition to your ego because it's using your cortisol as an instigator to blow your hormones out. Okay, And it is feeding that parasitic energy. Notice you're more depressed, you feel gross, right? You feel depressed after you eat crap. But then, of course, I feel depressed, so I want to eat crap because I feel depressed. And it's a vicious cycle. So watch your boundaries with white sugar and white flour, okay? Now, secondary, you're getting tested with your boundaries, 